everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are going to be going into I think a little bit of a unique and interesting subject so I was doing a live stream over on my patreon the other day and for some reason we got into an aside about the differences between bratting versus a damsel in distress and my brain did that wonderful thing it does where it decides to ruminate on something and I can't stop thinking about it and now all of you all <laughs> have to hear what I think about damsels in distress and bratting and how they are similar and how they are different. Now I would say that bratting I don't know if it's become popular necessarily in the sense that it's like a trend people are hopping on because other people are doing it but it has become very very visible and no matter where you go online in kink spaces people are talking about bratting can you do bratting in a ds relationship is bratting healthy are submissives that are brats really submissive and all sorts of things about related areas like smart ass masochists and topping from the bottom which inevitably come up when you mention the word brat and because of how common these conversations are i think a lot of us understand what bratting is even if we don't necessarily do it for ourselves but if for some reason you are totally unfamiliar with what bratting is and you want a more detailed exploration of the topic I will put some videos down below where I have done that in the past and I hope you enjoy but for a very brief summary bratting is most simply a role-playing style where typically the submissive or bottom partner taunts teases acts out talks back in some way acts naughty or bad in order to get the attention of their partner so for example you might have someone that runs up to their partner and goes mm, i bet you hit like a submissive and then they run off <laughs> assuming that their partner will go after them and catch them and teach them a lesson in this way bratting does oftentimes go alongside punishment or play punishment which instead of being about actually enforcing a relationship dynamic and a real broken rule or some kind of offense it is basically a made-up scenario that is designed that way by the people involved to basically play on the idea of being punished without really being punished and they find that to be enjoyable sometimes the bratting goes on for just long enough to get the scene going and then it fades away and at other times it goes on for the whole scene or even during the relationship itself oftentimes people do like to combine this with their other kinks so for example a bratty pet player or a bratty little or even a bratty service sub i have actually seen that one before i promise and though there are some people that do brat occasionally but not all the time for a lot of brats it is a core part of their bdsm identity and informs how they generally like to do their bdsm and prefer their kink to be done and if bratting wasn't there something would be missing and even though bratting again like I said is popular even though I don't necessarily like that terminology a lot of people do it and a lot of people are very aware of it but I don't think it's the only option I think there are a few different alternatives and one of them is sort of a forgotten classic called damsel in distress or DID now I think many people may be familiar with this because of certain types of bondage pornography but it's pretty rare to see this actual role play come out in a real life BDSM scenario and I think that's a shame because I think it's actually a really good alternative to bratting if some parts of bratting speak to you but other ones don't and you feel like am I like half a brat is there another thing I could do instead and maybe being a damsel is that very thing so as you might be able to tell from the terminology damsel in distress really comes to us from fairy tales right the princess 
locked away in a castle waiting to be saved, the noble lady that has been captured by an evil warlord or stolen away by a spider queen or some other kind of ne'er-do-well. And unfortunately, this language does mean that damsel in distress is somewhat gendered in nature, which I'm not a fan of, but that is the term that is most well known. However, I do like to think that you can be a princess or a prince or a young noble regardless of your gender if you so want to be. And it doesn't also have to be nobility necessarily. It can be other things as well, though that trope is the most common. It is more about having an innocent character that is forced into some kind of like depraved, uncomfortable, horrifying scenario. And this is where the comparison to bratting comes in. A brat will oftentimes bring the play on themselves and then continue the taunting and the teasing during the scene. That is pretty rare for a damsel. Usually a damsel doesn't invite things. They get stolen, they get kidnapped, they get put under a magic spell. And it's only when they realize the scenario they find themselves in that they then fight back. Calling their captor evil and horrible, they warn them that all the king's men will be looking for them. They struggle in their restraints and they try to fight back and resist what is happening to them. Similarly to how brats might protest and fight back and say, no, no, no. And I think that is where these two styles really start to overlap. I think they both share that feature of opposition and defiance. For a brat, they act out and they defy in order to get more of what they want, more pain, more attention, more humiliation. They act out because they want to eventually defy their partner's strength and control in order to egg them on. And it's in that egging on that they know that their partner is committed to them in this sort of interesting little way where it's, well, I'm gonna try and fight back and you pursuing me is my assurance that you're there and present in the relationship and in this scene. And that struggle is a way of testing those boundaries and being assured that those boundaries actually are there and exist. And the damsel fights back as well, though more for their honor and innocence and nobly resisting the darkness and depravity that they've been faced with. It can also be about surrender and hopelessness. Like I mentioned, a lot of people that do bratting enjoy it because of how it assures them of the boundaries of the relationship. And there can be comfort in knowing that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try to get away and tease and fight and all of that, that there will always be a more powerful force, a more powerful person that can eventually overcome you and control you and force you to obey. And though it might seem strange from the outside, there is comfort in that kind of surrender. And oftentimes, a damsel is looking for that same kind of surrender themselves, but with a twist. So on the one hand, a damsel in distress scene can be played what I would call straight, right? Where it follows very typical story beat lines, right? Where there is a princess or some kind of other figure that gets stolen or captured or what have you, taken away by an evil person, and eventually they are either able to free themselves and escape or they are rescued by some other third party, like a knight in shining armor, let's say. And this actually means it can be a great three-person scene or a great co-topping scene if you wanted to pursue that. Bondage tends to be the biggest thing in damsel in distress type scenarios rather than pain, which is actually, I think, really great news because bratting tends to be very pain and masochism centric. But if you wanna struggle and fight back, but be confronted with like, a gag instead of a cane, this might be a good option for you. And it means you don't have to be a masochist or a sadist in order to enjoy it. It's about that struggle and fight and eventually being freed that is enjoyable. However, it's not always as clear cut. It is not always like we remember in old fairy tales. Sometimes the damsel deep, deep down might actually start to enjoy their torment and they realize that the struggle is useless. No matter how much they scream and cry and carry on, 
No one is coming to save them. There is no way out. They can't escape from their magical locks, for example. So what's the alternative? If you can't get out, you have to lean in. You have to surrender to what is going on in order to get through it. And that might mean embracing the perverse pleasure of being bound with manacles or being spanked or flogged or otherwise violated by the captor. They have to cast aside their innocence and purity and embrace that taboo. And on their own, they would never ever give in to such carnal delights because, oh no, they are such a pure and innocent person. There was no way they could be tempted. It was only because they were tortured and forced to do it that they became carnal and sinful and lustful in some fashion. It isn't their fault. They were made to do it. There was nothing they could do to stop it. And playing on that idea of being forced to do something kind of depraved and outside of social norms and enjoying it in kind of a perverse fashion is common with a lot of kinks. Everything from like consensual non-consent over to hypnosis, being forced into doing something that you typically wouldn't do. And I don't think that's really surprising that that is so common because for most of us, we grew up in a very sex negative culture and things like sex and any kind of physical pleasure for that matter were only for wedlock. And it was unacceptable to do anything involving physical or sexual pleasure outside of that. But there was one tiny loophole. If you were forced to do it, if it was against your will, then it's okay. It's not your fault that you violated the social norm, right? And having sort of a permission to do something that is typically taboo and forbidden can be really alluring. It can be very powerful to have a negotiated consensual BDSM scene where you play with those ideas, but you are still in total control and everything can stop with just a single word. And I think that really draws people into playing in this damsel in distress sort of space where it's not only acting out maybe fairy tales that you grew up with or certain fantasies you maybe had from a very young age, but also allows you to have more control over the societal restrictions on pleasure. So hopefully you guys can kind of see now maybe how these two seemingly dissimilar kinks actually have a fair bit in common. Of course, you really won't see damsel in distress in power exchange relationships like you would with bratting. It does tend to stay as more of a scene only thing, but I do still think they allow you to explore similar ideas regardless. And if you are someone that has been interested in bratting, but you don't really like all of it, like maybe you're not really a masochist, so you're not really trying to get more pain, maybe damsel in distress is a good option for you. And I highly recommend trying it out in your next scene or at some point in the future, at least. And that is everything that I have to share in today's video. I would love to hear what you all have to say about this in a comment down below. Am I totally off base with this comparison? Do you guys see what I'm saying? Did you know about Damsel in Distress before this? Have you tried it before? Anything else you wanna share? Again, put it in a comment in the comment section down below. If you have not already and you would like to, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you really enjoyed this, if you wanna support what I do, please go ahead and check out my Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.